Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Just want to do a really quick and efficient uh, formula review here for you around the max x formula, so the iterating function max x. Uh, and this is just a really, really simple example um, uh, around how you can find the last date something occurred, right? And uh, I've seen questions like this on the Enterprise DNA forum quite a bit. Uh, and uh, a, a big part of it is just understanding what an iterating function enables you to do. Okay, so we'll, we'll go over that in a little bit of detail. But what, we'll, what we've got here, this is just some simple survey data where the same sort of customer or the same person can take sort of the, uh, t can take a survey multiple different times. And what we want to find here, or what we want to work out is when was the last date that someone actually took the particular um, took the particular survey. Now, I've got here it in a, in a calculated column, but I want to show you how to do it in measure. Okay, this I think this was sort of just for a placeholder around how you could do it if you actually needed it in here. But you can you can do this just as easily within a measure, and it's better to do things in a measure if you can, right? So just just for for the moment, just think that this column doesn't exist, and just think that this would be the table, and these are all the questions of the survey, and we just want to assess, okay, when was the last time someone actually took the survey? Now, this is just one scenario. This is one example of data. The same technique can be used in many different ways, right? So I just want you to think more sort of broadly around how this technique could be used. You know, maybe you want to work out the last time someone bought a particular product, the last time. Uh, you know, a uh, particular customer, uh, a particular salesperson sold to a particular customer, you know, all, all those great things uh, can be worked out using a similar technique to this. Okay. So what we've done um, is, so uh, let's, what we'll just switch these around actually. So we first of all, just want to have a look at, okay, by customer name, um, when was the very last time they took a, the, the survey, right? And so let's have a quick jump in here and have a look what we've done. Okay, so the first thing we need to work out in this particular context, right, is this variable. We need to work out, okay, what is the name of that particular person, okay? Then we can work through a virtual table to go and work out, okay, let's create a, let's create a virtual table, and that's what this filter is doing inside of MaxX, because remember MaxX iterates through, it's gonna iterate through something, that's what iterating functions do. And what's great is that we don't need a physical table here, we can create a virtual table. The virtual table is we're gonna look through every um, line of the survey data table, but we're going to filter that table, that virtual table by just the survey results for the current name. So for this particular context, it's gonna be this name. For this particular context, it's gonna be this name. So on and so forth. So we're basically gonna get a virtual table of only the surveys that this particular person took here, right? Then what we're gonna do, because it's wrapped inside of MaxX, it's gonna uh, just bring, return us one result, the max result, and that max result is gonna be this date taken, okay? And so ultimately, we're gonna get one date, which is just showing when this person last took the survey right and that's it that's it that is that is that is how you work out various different things like this now there's a lot of derivatives around this uh, particular formula like say for example you wanted to say okay well what was what, you know something really simple like what was seven days before the last time someone did something okay so you know again you could just sort of like add in metrics like this you know, just within within the actual iterating function itself. And then that's going to change the days back seven, seven days, right? You could also do things like when was the, um, you could even take this as far as like, when was the, t the time before the last time? And so all you'd need to do here is you'd, you'd need to, um, this would probably, you'd probably want this to be a variable. And then what you'd also want to do inside of, so you'd, you would get the max date, but then you would s say, okay, we'll go and calculate the max date but then filter this virtual table, not only by name, but also make sure all the dates are before the max date. And then so then you'd get the max date um, of the date prior to the max date, right? So there's, there's so many different ways that you can actually utilize this technique to go and get some sort of max or even min. I mean, you could do this, you could flip this around and use min x as well. Uh, that's, that, that, that's absolutely fine. And what's uh, interesting here as well 
is let's just see um, you can place this very same sort of formula pattern I mean this this really is like a formula pattern by the way um, you know obviously you would need to change these parameters all of these parameters um, for whatever max or, or, or min ultimately you'd want um, but it is it is sort of like a pattern that can be just copied and pasted reused over and over again to go and find insights like this and the great thing here is that you can place this into a different context because you can sort of see okay well this was a date taken um, this, this is this is this is a breakdown of every single time they took the survey but we can still see when the max survey date was um, because then from here we could probably create another measure and say um, uh, we can say this is why you don't need a calculated column days from uh, last taken and then all we could do here is go max survey date minus the um, the date selected value I think we have to do select value date date taken let's see if this returns a value for us um, Mm, see it's returning it's returning returning a date at the moment uh, we might need to wrap it in value I think let's have a look maybe if I actually Go like this days just have a quick I'll just quickly show you I'll just quickly show you this so that you know how you can do it and then value days let's see if this works there we go and then we could just change the format of this so this is why you don't need calculated columns, right? Because you can do this all within measures very, very easily. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. This is you know, short and sweet, easy stuff. Just covering off something that I've seen a number of times. Want to making sure that you can see the pattern, identify what you need and implement it, right? Iterating functions. Don't know what iterating functions are? Check out plenty of videos on that that topic historically. Um, you know, this, this is an absolutely crucial concept to to use in power in, in, inside of Power BI, especially when, well, particularly when using DAX formulas. Okay, if you like this one, uh, definitely throw the video a like. Really appreciate it as always, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Got plenty of great content coming out to you. So many great initiatives we're working on. Want to let you know about them um, so that you can um, benefit them um, as you you know, look to master Power BI. Benefit from them as you look to master power. Yeah. Okay. Take care, everyone. All the best.